welcome to No Movies in Hell. I'm Chris Geiger. I'm LaCroix Scott. And today we are reviewing Thelma. And we have a special guest, Nate Kushner. I saw it. <laughs> <laughs> what did you think about Thelma, Nate? Uh, I thought it was... Almost, you know, I'm, 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 I'm critical of movies, but I thought it was almost as perfect as it could be for, for that premise. Just like absolute, just really totally wonderful, like performances, like thrills, uh, funny, just nice, nice piece of work. The plot was much more elaborate than I thought it was going to be going into it. I had seen the extended trailer where they show the scene where they're walking away and the garbage cans on fire. So mm-hmm. I knew that that was coming at some point, mm-hmm. but I just wasn't sure how we we're going to get there. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Look, yeah, I, you... I don't want to spoil too much exactly what was exploding, but, but it's awesome. <laughs> I thought it was great based off of the trailer. Yeah. I thought that it would kind of be a little more lighthearted. I mean, this went into, it's interesting. It kind of went into like beekeeper territory. <laughs> Obviously it's about a senior who experiences fraud and i really really like the dynamic between thelma and her grandson because her grandson is helping her use the computer and uh figure out the internet and so when this thing happens to her she didn't want she wasn't going to be the victim and she kind of went after it and i love you know the checkoffs uh you know uh mission impossible the checkoffs gun the checkoff like uh, monitoring brace like everything just was well used in this film i liked it a lot i took my parents to see it so that was fun uh we were in northern kentucky so we saw it at amc newport on the levy which is like their big theater i think they have like 20 screens in there okay uh, and thelma was showing and it, there weren't very many people in there with us although i would say i was probably one of the younger people Mm-hmm. in the theater but awesome it was great i loved it i liked the woman who said that you know roaches are uh formidable <laughs> opponents yeah like that was very cute uh, uh, chris I gotta, I gotta ask were, were, were the boomers talking in your show like oh yeah <laughs> <laughs> okay, we, okay we went to a theater that was i would have to say it was half full full of seniors um we were probably the youngest people there Almost um different. And yes, there were a lot of talkers. And actually the person, the two people sitting next to Dax were older and they were actually talking to Dax part of the time. Like they would <laughs> talk, lean over and say things to him. They were like, eh. <laughs> Did you see that? But it was great. It was great to see it in that setting too. I had just seen Inside Out too. The, prior to that in the theater i would say as many people were talking in that as we're talking in thelma so oh, wow but the opposite age spectrum right like just like a lot of little kids in that movie did you guys have any other thoughts and feelings before we go to the slide this is a really great film i would recommend it to everyone i think maybe i'm jumping ahead i thought it was great <laughs> i i kind of felt the same thing it's like I, I know there's some movies that i love that are kind of just for me but but this is like really easy to recommend it to everybody <laughs> I'm definitely, I'm going to recommend it tomorrow to my UX design colleagues, because uh, there's there's a couple scenes that are going to hit us in a certain way about there's uh, scumbags who uh, who design things to make certain certain elements of uh, web design harder for people who are, you know, a little less than 100% sharp, let's, let's just say. Right. The, like the pop-up ad mm-hmm. that mm-hmm. kept showing up. Like that was, yeah. So we both came at 23. Wow. That's yeah, surprising. We- Rated it the same across the board. From the acting perspective, I thought it was great. Uh, I thought all the actors did a really great job. Uh, even the o- the overacting or the overreacting by P- Parker Posey. But I really enjoyed the story and mm-hmm. her fight and just kind of you know seeing the world. You you feel the world through like a senior's eyes of all the obstacles, especially <laughs> when they're in the woman's house and you have to go up the stairs and it's like, well, now you understand why that woman just, you know, was sitting in that chair the whole time. Yeah. I I feel like uh, the stakes and the danger are are different for these characters and and the movie made you feel it real cool. Yeah. Acting pretty perfect. June Squibb, of course, but I hope uh, people also talk about uh, Richard Roundtree in the same, in the same breath. Yeah, for for sure. It definitely makes me want to go back and watch other movies that they 
part in mm-hmm. that maybe I haven't watched previously. I think she was in Nebraska that came out a couple years ago. Is that what she was nominated for? <laughs> Almost sure you're right. Yep. Yeah. I did think that the soundtrack could have been more fun, but I was okay with what it was. Yeah. Maybe they had a budget. To me, this struck out as like a very indie film. And then someone saw it and was like, okay, we're going to put, you know, we're going to make sure that everybody sees this and that people are going to talk about it. So maybe that's what they had to give up. And I I just think you're both underrating uh, two plot relevant pieces of jewelry. (laughs) (laughs) Okay, Nate, what what were the plot relevant pieces of jewelry? Uh, The smartwatch and the uh, alert. (laughs) Yeah. Yes. No, you're right. I have a hard time calling those jewelry, but okay. (laughs) Technology. Yes, wearable technology. To to know how to do to to Bluetooth. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, And I think I think the soundtrack would have gotten another point or two if we'd gotten to hear some of those uh, songs from Annie. Yeah, for sure. (laughs) With that guest, give me a break. (laughs) Oh my goodness. Nice. What's coming up that you want to plug? Oh gosh, uh, you know I, I I do film criticism myself on on Letterboxd uh, under the name uh, Naderboxd. You can hear some of my some of my thoughts. I, I go into more detail there. Okay, what's what's next on your to watch list? Um, I think this very evening I'm gonna I'm gonna watch a movie from the '60s called uh, Point Blank with Lee Marvin in it. Will you review that on Letterboxd when you're done, or do you feel? Oh like, yeah. Oh, oh okay. <laughs> And why this one tonight? Um, I, I usually make homework every month out of just watching certain things that are on the, cri- the Criterion streaming service as a, as a list that says these things are leaving at the end of the month. And that, that usually gives me about seven films to watch as homework that month. But So that'll be one of them. But, okay. apparently, you know, influential in, in, uh, in, crime, in crime films. We'll, we'll find out. Lee Marvin's fun to watch, too. So. Awesome. LaCroix, what do you have to plug? So lots of great movies to see. Saw the new uh, trailer for Nos- Nosferatu that looks really good by Robert Eggers. Just saw Maxine. How about yourself? Anything you're looking forward to in the next couple weeks? Maxine is on my list for this coming week. I did see Escape, which is a Korean movie. So AMC is sort of counter-programming against the New York Asian Film Festival, which is starting Mm. this coming week. So they're doing a lot of Asian movies. Um, So there are two Korean movies out right now. Actually, there was another one on Friday that I missed because I was traveling on Friday. It was Handsome Guys on Friday, but that's already gone. Escape was only showing today. And there's one called Hijack 1971, Mm. which is about uh, the 1969 hijack plane. Um, from South Korea. Yeah. So lots of Asian films out there. Uh, this... I guess that reminds me, uh, we are going uh, next weekend to see uh, Seven Samurai at Film Forum. Yay! I might be going too. Oh, cool. okay. But yeah, maybe we can all talk about Seven Samurai. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's been a while. Now, right. have you watched The Magnificent Seven? Yes. I have not any version of it myself, no, actually. I think it's on Netflix. <laughs> I wouldn't be surprised. Yeah. yeah. Wait, are you thinking of the ridiculous six? No, <laughs> the magnificent seven. W- okay, <laughs> with uh, Denzel Washington, I believe Chris Pratt. There's a couple other people. I'm obviously five other people. I'm obviously missing. <laughs> Rob Schneider says you can do it. Probably no. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not familiar with that version. I okay. feel like. Yeah, I mean, like, in I'm all seriousness, about- it sounds like it's the worst. It's the worst thing ever. I, I was, I was being silly. I feel like I, I saw a long time ago the Yul Brenner Magnificent Seven. Oh, no, this one came out, I want to say, in the last five or six years. Wow, okay. I totally missed that then. I'll have to go see if it is on Netflix. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time. Okay.